Good morning, folks. Deb DePiani here, and where are we this morning on the GOP Express to Hell? Um, so let's talk about what we do know. We have a really important race from our perspective going on in Alaska, which has ranked choice voting. Now, a couple months ago, uh, three candidates faced off there, Mark Begich, Sarah Palin, and Mary Peltola, uh, a Democrat. Uh, she won the special election and she's rerunning now to take the seat permanently. And she is ahead in the ranked choice voting. She has 47.3% to Sarah Palin's 26.6%. I'm not sure where Mark Begich uh, is in that equation, and I don't really think it matters. Um, fact of the matter is Palin and Begich could have agreed to cooperate, and one could have dropped out and supported the other. So sorry. No pity. Uh, Mary Peltola is leading with 47.3%. She needs 50% for an automatic win. We're still counting. We'll see where that goes, but I feel pretty confident that Mary Peltola will be the very first native Alaskan to represent Alaska on a solid basis, a non, on an actual election win, not a special election, okay? That's a big thing. That's a big thing, and we love Mary, honestly. Um, in Nevada, the Democrats have retained three House seats, the House seats of Representative Dina Titus, Stephen Horsford, and Susie Lee, all uh, winning and more rejection for the GOP. Look, at, l let me just say this. I have said this for a long time. This particular midterm series is not like any other, okay? It's basically, to me, a referendum between democracy and fascism. End of story. Everything else is just a secondary issue, okay? Because nothing improves under fascism. Nothing, okay? And I'm going to say this right now. Even if this had been a normal Republican Party that we were working on here, um, the historical events of midterm elections are that the party in power loses either the House or the Senate. The GOP is having a very hard time doing anything right now. Where are we with other races? It's official today. Mark Kelly, Arizona, has defeated Blake Masters for the Senate. He returns to the Senate, defeating a total funded, totally uh, fascist-funded candidate in Blake Masters, funded by Peter Thiel, uh, who, you know, uh, poured millions of dollars into uh, this guy's race. Also, J.D. Vance, who did win. Uh, one out of two, I guess, ain't bad for the amount of money spent, although they are shit candidates, quite frankly. Uh, but Blake Masters has lost to Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly is officially the Democratic senator from the state of Arizona. Where are we with Carrie Lake? She is right now losing to Katie Hobbs. We don't know where that's going to go. She's melting down all over uh, all over social media. Uh, she opened up, uh, I believe it's called uh, Carrie Lake's War Room on Twitter. She's she's at war, folks. She's she's just beside herself that you know she didn't cakewalk to a win here in Arizona. Katie Hobbs is uh, is still in the lead. We are still counting votes. Uh, we are also embroiled in a another tight race uh, with uh, in the House with uh, surprisingly Lauren Bobert and Adam Frisch are relatively unknown uh, right now. I think there's under a thousand votes separating them. They are still counting, and they are already talking about a recall. I'm uh, sorry, a recount in that area. So I don't know where that's going to go, but that's a that's still an up in the year situation. Uh, in Arizona, also more great news: Mark Fincham, 
total Trump, you know, election denier, uh, you know, a stop the steel man, uh, a man who went to the rallies, who, you know, played fast and loose with, you know, some data from polling machines. He went down to defeat uh, to Adrian Flores as the secretary of state in Arizona. And that's a very good thing because there is no election integrity with Mark Fincham at the helm of the secretary of state position. Michelle Fiore, likewise, in Nevada, another Trump accolade who took a picture next to her horse with a gun. Uh, another Trump denier, election denier. She was defeated by Zach Connie, the incumbent Democrat. Um, Trump could not help her win. She's a loon and she is not going to be the state treasurer. And we are thankful for that. In Nevada, the sec uh, the Senate race between uh, Catherine Cortez Masto and Adam Laxalt is still up in the air. He is holding a slight lead, but they just cut those leads with another ballot dump. So we are still counting near. Don't know where that's going to go yet. But let me tell you, if Catherine Cortez Masto can take that and give the Democrats their 50th seat, we can get number 51 in the runoff between Herschel Walker and uh, and our friend down there in in uh, in Georgia, the actual reverend, and not a fake policeman with a fake badge, uh, Raphael Warnock. We need to win that, people, and we need to start pushing that issue now. You know, as I said yesterday, they're moving away from talking about Herschel Walker's lack of character to talking about the fact that Herschel Walker can't string a fucking sentence together and seriously is totally unqualified for the job, thinks that the uh, gl the climate change, um, you know, initiative, the, the bill that was passed is about planting trees. We are so far beyond planting trees, it's not even funny, folks. But that's where we are. We are still up in the air. We are still waiting for California um, House seats. So is it a given that the GOP is going to take at least the House? No, nothing's a given right now. Nothing's a given right now. The only given we have right here is that there was no red wave. None. Okay. You know, do I wish this had been a clearer victory for the Democrats? I sure do. But given the fact that we were facing full frontal fascism here, in my mind, what we've seen here is a basic rejection uh, by the American people of these ideals. You know, it isn't a case of poor Carrie Lake, they're stealing my election again. You know, I have said this before and I'll say it again. The Republicans do not legislate and they do not govern. Their policies and their positions have historically been wildly unpopular except for a portion of the population that would benefit from them. If you returned them to power, they would take care of their billionaire buddies they were already talking about. Rubber stamping Donald Trump's tax cut to billionaires, which added $7 trillion to the fucking deficit when they did it the last time. And then you come over here and you're bitching about the economy and the deficit. And what are we going to do to cut the deficit? Well, I don't know. Why don't you ask fucking Donald Trump? why he added to the deficit to take care of a few billionaires instead of taking care of the vast majority of people in this country. Because that is exactly what they're fucking elected to do. Okay? End of story. They're not here to serve big business. They're not here to serve billionaires. But if they are, that's called fascism. Okay? Do we understand each other clearly here? So let me just say, you guys have a lovely day. We will keep, you know on top of all of these changes, um, you know, they're changing pretty rapidly, the numbers. So we will see where we go from here. And I will keep you guys in the loop. Talk to you later. Have a great day.